Master Ruby on Rails, a step-by-step -step guide. Welcome to our comprehensive guide on mastering Ruby on Rails, the popular open source web development framework. Whether you're a coding newbie or have some experience, this roadmap will take you from zero to hero in the world of Rails. We'll break down complex concepts into bite-sized pieces, making it easy to digest and apply. From e-commerce giants to social media platforms, Rails powers some of the biggest names on the web. We'll cover everything from the fundamentals to advanced concepts, giving you the tools and knowledge to build your own web applications with confidence. Let's dive in. Learn the basics of Ruby. Before we jump into Rails, we need to talk about Ruby. Ruby is the programming language that Rails is built on. It's known for its elegant syntax and developer friendliness. Think of it like this. If Rails is the sleek car, Ruby is the powerful engine under the hood. We'll start with the basics. Variables, data types, loops, and conditional statements. Don't worry if these sound unfamiliar. Once we have the basics down, we'll move on to more advanced concepts like object-oriented programming. By the end of this chapter, you'll have a solid grasp of the Ruby language, providing you with the foundation you need to tackle Rails head-on. Understand web development fundamentals. Now that we've got our Ruby foundation in place, let's shift gears and talk about the web. Before diving into Rails, it's crucial to grasp the fundamentals of how web applications actually work. Imagine this, you type in a URL, hit enter and boom, a web page appears. But behind the scenes, there's a whole lot going on. We'll demystify this process, exploring the client-server model and the role of HTTP requests and responses. We'll also delve into front-end technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are the building blocks of what you see and interact with on a web page. Understanding these fundamentals will give you a clearer picture of where Rails fits into the web development landscape. Install Ruby on Rails. Time to install Rails. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. First, we'll install Ruby using a version manager. Next, install Rails using the gem command. Seeing that output means we're ready to roll with Rails development. Chapter 4. Rails follows a powerful architectural pattern called Model View Controller, or MVC for short. Imagine it as the blueprint for organizing your code and keeping things tidy. The model represents your data, the users, products, or whatever information your application deals with. The view is what the user sees, the web pages, forms, and visual elements. The controller acts as the intermediary, taking requests, fetching data from the model, and passing it to the view for display. By the end of this chapter, you'll be fluent in the MVC lingo and understand how data flows through a Rails application. Chapter 5. In the world of web applications, URLs are the addresses that guide users to specific pages or actions. Rails has a super slick way of handling this called routing. Think of routing as the traffic cop of your application, directing incoming requests to the right controllers and actions. It's what allows you to have clean human readable URLs like slash articles or slash user slash profile instead of messy query strings. We'll dive into the file, which is where the magic happens. By the end of this chapter, you'll be a routing pro, able to guide users seamlessly through your application with well-structured URLs. Chapter 6. Data is the lifeblood of most web applications, and that's where Active Record comes in. It's the ORM, Object Relational Mapping layer in Rails, that makes interacting with databases a breeze. Instead of writing raw SQL queries, you get to use elegant Ruby code to perform CRUD, create, read, update, delete operations on your data. We'll explore how to define models, map them to database tables, and perform various database operations using Active Record's intuitive methods. You'll be amazed at how much simpler it makes working with data. By the end of this chapter, you'll be wielding the power of Active Record like a pro, effortlessly managing your application's data with Ruby-like ease. Chapter 7. It's time to make our applications visually appealing and interactive. In this chapter, we'll dive into Rails views and the asset pipeline, the tools that bring the front end to life. Think of views as the templates for your web pages. They're written in embedded Ruby, 
which lets you seamlessly combine HTML with dynamic content generated by your Rails application. The Asset Pipeline is like a well-organized workshop for managing your front-end assets, CSS files for styling, JavaScript files for interactivity, and images for visuals. We'll explore how to create layouts, partials, and use helpers to keep your views clean and maintainable. By the end of this chapter, you'll be building dynamic and stylish web pages with ease. Chapter 8. Forms are the gateways for users to interact with your web application, and Rails makes handling them incredibly smooth. We'll explore how to create forms, handle user input, and validate data to ensure its integrity. Think of validations as the gatekeepers of your application, ensuring that only valid and properly formatted data gets through. Rails provides a powerful form helper that streamlines the process of creating forms and handling user input. We'll learn how to use these helpers to generate form elements, handle submissions, and display validation errors gracefully. By the end of this chapter, you'll be a master of forms, effortlessly capturing and validating user data with Rails' elegant tools. Chapter 9. Security is paramount in web applications, and this chapter is all about locking down your Rails projects with authentication and authorization. Authentication is like the bouncer at the door, verifying the identity of users trying to access your application. We'll implement user login, registration, and password reset functionalities using industry standard techniques. Authorization, on the other hand, is like the access control system, determining what each authenticated user is allowed to do within your application. By the end of this chapter, you'll have the knowledge and tools to build secure Rails applications that protect user data and prevent unauthorized access. Chapter 10, Testing in Rails. Testing is like having a safety net for your code, catching errors and ensuring that your application behaves as expected. In this chapter, we'll explore the world of testing in Rails, covering different testing approaches and best practices. We'll dive into unit tests, which focus on testing individual components of your code in isolation. Then we'll move on to integration tests, which verify that different parts of your application work together seamlessly. By the end of this chapter, you'll have the skills and confidence to write tests that ensure the quality and reliability of your Rails applications. Chapter 11, Learn Rails API. Rails is great for creating APIs or application programming interfaces. We'll explore building APIs with Rails, enabling communication with other applications or front-end frameworks. Your application makes a request and the API fetches the data and serves it back. Learn to design RESTful APIs, handle HTTP verbs, format data, and implement authentication. By the end, you'll build APIs for single-page apps, mobile apps, or other services. Chapter 12, Deploying Rails Applications. You've built an amazing Rails application, and now it's time to share it with the world. This chapter is all about deploying your Rails applications, taking them from your local development environment to a live server where users can access them. We'll explore different deployment options, including popular cloud platforms like Heroku, AWS, and DigitalOcean. You'll learn how to configure servers, set up databases, and deploy your code using tools like Git and SSH. We'll also cover important considerations like SSL certificates for security and setting up a custom domain name. By the end of this chapter, you'll have the skills and knowledge to deploy your Rails applications with confidence, making them accessible to users worldwide. Outro Master Ruby on Rails, you got this. And that's a wrap. We've covered a ton of ground from the fundamentals of Ruby to deploying your Rails applications for the world to see. Remember, mastering any new skill takes time and practice. Don't be afraid to experiment, break things, and learn from your mistakes. Whether you're building the next big startup or just exploring the world of web development, Rails provides a powerful and enjoyable framework to bring your ideas to life. Thanks for watching and happy coding.